jump straight into it. Yes, I almost commenting on the eye tracking tool. So I have it running in the local debugging mode and also I have it as my camera as well. Which way is it? This way. No, I can't point it. It's like, and it is the same camera. Wait, why do I have two cameras running? That's not a good sign. Potentially could mean something is wrong. Is something wrong? Yeah, we, we might try the eye tracking with two cameras at some stage. At the moment, there's a problem on the mobile. I could not actually reproduce it. So if I go mobile, uh, and this is the resolution, the dimension of the screen that I have uh, on my mobile device, but it doesn't behave in the same way on my mobile. Well, so it's loading it as a regular website, not as a mobile website. And that's, I think, a problem. It might be a problem if the width of the we have this video container in style css yeah this might be this might be an issue the rub flex i'm yeah, pretty sure i don't know anything about css that's what i have the port for it's also the fact that i cannot replicate it wait are we calling this css correctly yeah so we have one uh, css for the entire project uh, so all the website looks uh, more or less the same um, and then we have another one for a specific uh, application and I wonder if they sometimes clash in the actual application we should not where is it have a video container and um, so let's check the CSS for yes yeah, so this is the CSS for the whole project Could probably be uh, minimized yeah, anyway I, so the main problem is that i can't replicate the thing on my in my browser uh, in the browser it's working okay on my phone the overlay we can do like a split view but that, that that's fine that's not what's happening what's happening is that the video footage is uh, not starting at zero and then the overlay is uh, offset so yeah make sure that the position is uh, absolute for both the video and the tracking canvas that meant to be overlaid it's the overlaid bit on top yeah otherwise you can change your eye width height uh, height and then the main thing is that the threshold thing actually makes a lot of difference because it's uh, it's finding the darkest point essentially in that uh, region of interest yes yeah, so if you're looking directly at the camera yeah it's working better for for one eye than the other and yes the light in the room will make a lot of difference as well just two more light and yeah you can essentially go right for it Make the ROI smaller. Actually, not looking directly at the camera. That could be a problem as well. Anyway, play around with it and let me know what you think. It's on the, the main page. And yes, uh, it's uh, everything, all the tools being optimized for desktop, not mobile at the moment. So uh, it is work in progress. If anyone knows how to optimize for mobile, do let me know as well uh, last time so we edit yes yeah, so we have a bunch of uh, uh, blogs now yeah, it would be good to have this plan outman plot actually display real data do have just the basic uh, python code but that's just generating examples it's just a uh, random values we will eventually apply it on to real EEG or ECG let me know what do you prefer should I do more EEG or ECG stuff and um, right another thing we were doing yesterday so this about section we added a few more pages there's a potential uh, student project so if you have any students that you know or you are a student yourself you want to do a project maybe send this to your supervisor a uh, one is a uh, mainly around the uh, doing x ai what is it explainable ai with biomedical data no black boxes big no to black boxes so we'll explain everything and know 
what's inside the box. And our project is around visualization, which we, as you can tell, are highly interested in. Uh, we're also doing this resource page. So we actually updated this one. Let's open it in a, a separate window. We'll do some more work on it. We're essentially putting it into a table. About the table in a sec was called resources HTML. It is one run it locally. This was not published yet. Has this table that we're still populating. Yeah, a lot of the items are unknown, even though it should be pretty straightforward to fill the year of release. And this has a um, data set comparison thing, a number of subjects. Yeah, of course, it's quite important. Some of the subjects are not human. So that's uh, important to mention. But yes, I mean, obviously, once they're not human, probably have uh, a, a model of uh, some sort of condition, uh, which will require a completely different uh, type of analysis. Then we have the data format. And yes, MAT files can be opened in Python. I do not use MATLAB anymore because it's too expensive. This one, I don't know why. It's unknown. The ADF is a standard format for a DEG. I don't know what these ones are. So if you know what they are, let me know. It's quite important to know if the data is uh, raw, processed, pre-processed, so on and so forth, heavily processed or lightly processed, and if there were any additional modalities recorded. So we know quite a bit about the, this NeuroVista implant data. Most of the tools on the page are from the EEG tools are from that data. ECG, most of the tools are actually a synthetic a EEG, like this one. It looks real because there's noise added to it, but uh, this is synthetic data. All the EEG data on the website is this NeuroVista data. It is essentially publicly available on IEG.org. Um, so that's another website that holds uh, repos. So we have this bit somewhere. Yes, yeah, search platforms. Uh, so essentially IEG is a search platform. Well, it's not a search platform. It's a, it's a repo. Not a repo. Is it a repo? No, it's a platform. So they have a set platforms. Yeah, IEG org would be one of those it should go there it does require a basic login so that's what we ranking the data sets yeah so you have a data set okay you have a study okay you have a device <laughs> yeah, this becomes highly convoluted isn't it because we do also have devices so i have a recording device say for eeg then that device could have been uh, used for a specific study that had a certain number of patients. The patients, for example, were in a different groups, so healthy uh, controls and, uh, uh, say, epilepsy patients. Then the same device could be used in multiple studies. Then you have essentially the data collected from one study being published in multiple repositories. Yeah, so I have to monitor all this stuff. Stuff. How do we make sense of it? Well, we pop it into GPT-4. <laughs> what do we normally do? A uh, pop the actual and uh, the actual HTML that we have. Sometimes uh, refusing to actually look at the links. Yeah, but I was just starting to. Interesting. It didn't start from the from the bottom. Yeah, we have an overview. I need to check how it looks like on smaller screens. Who knows? Yeah, it doesn't look good. How do you show tables on smaller screens? Do you ask um, to rotate the phone or I have to deal with this later? All right, so some of these links. Okay, so say this link goes uh, to a data set, a specific data set, the description, so on and so forth. It's on the uh, fixture. This link, however, just goes well because it requires a login. So for you, 
it will just go to the website and not the extension with the actual data. It's not a problem with it's now a problem of uh, websites that require login. That's why there is no login on uh, on my site. So it looks the same for everyone. Logins just, uh, yeah, add additional complexities. People don't like it. What I'm saying is, well, because it's a link, so because this requires a login, it will just go to the general website, not where the database is actually stored. So it should go into platform. But yes. If you go scholar, this uh, data set was used supposedly 300, more than 300 times, 400 times. Yeah, that looks like, yeah. <laughs> That's actually quite a good paper. <laughs> yeah, reading it when it came up. The war story behind launching a venture to treat epilepsy. It's quite a quite a roller coaster this one. Yeah, the data itself is from 2014 or something. It's funny how when you sort by date you only get four results. It's really odd. You sort by relevance, you get 442 results. And some of this data is on Kaggle, hey, Kaggle as well. Right, so we have this data set. It's currently on Kaggle, this competition. It's uh, finished, published the solution. And I have different members did different things. They just took all the models. Uh, together so one person was doing a 2d model then why did you need a frequency transform they all used raw eg interestingly they didn't use the images the spectrogram images and uh, that's interesting because the data yeah was essentially yeah i covered this before yeah i have the raw eg there why the resolution of this thing is not great uh, and then the spectrogram essentially four spectrograms for each recording each uh, from uh, a quarter of a brain anyway interestingly the winning uh, team only looked at the raw EG, not the, the spectrogram they did a frequency transform i don't know what they mean by to the model did they publish their stuff separately did they no they did take the spectrogram images Stacked scalogram image. Is this the same data? No. What? Anyway, the point is that we will uh, try and deploy, you know, train a fuzzy logic uh, explainable AI thing on the same uh, model, then um, compare it to one of those models. It obviously, one, you know, best a uh, first place or a second place. Don't worry about the actual HTML. Hey, we want to focus on the table. We want to keep uh, placing all the mentioned and potentially new data sets into the table. And yes, ideally we would like for it to be displayed okay on a mobile phone as well. But if it's too hard, the uh, don't worry about it. Get the header on small screens. What? Why? Yeah, not uh, overwhelming uh, mobile users. Sounds like a great idea. Um, how do we move the table into a JSON file and uh, pass it correctly on the page? Uh, yes, load more uh, for mobile users will be great as well. It seemed to become complicated. Uh, can you generate the whole JSON file? Um, shall we turn it into a Flask application? Because we're already deploying some on our server. I mean, surely this does not need a backend. This is the HTML code that I have so far. Will it be fetching the JSON file from the server every time? is the option of using a CBN 
a content delivery network is still uh, would be still available don't think that's how my server works don't think it will actually be faster if i keep it in uh, memory all the time yeah know how a cdn works but uh, but if we continue with uh, having everything having the table in a html format would it by default be using a cdn no potatoes uh, data set platforms a fig share place that one last hopefully that pretty well some website from the netherlands say uh, for to you research data that we have well fig share should work we already tested this thing before maybe not i just a bit slow to load and those are preloaded with the eg in the search zen nodo electricity demand in europe <laughs> it's the best match let's try electron graphy. right this is better flower electrodes it's from that's pretty recent the second one's from 2017 uh, okay that works try can control uh let's just say five it's not a right seem to show something useful by the way if you haven't checked out bonkills.com please go do so you will be supporting this project that way a physio net page not found what do i just do it from the hey from the url i go physio net data it seems to be loading data sets uh, only anyway pop those in just double check it's working okay video net eg right then we have the ieg portal that yeah requires the uh, login and google data set search right now we actually is so yeah the problem with the neuro vista implant because the again yeah, already said it like five times or something ten times but because it has a, a it requires a login i cannot have the actual link to to the to the data set it goes to the platform yeah it's a bit of a broken website it's just loading forever is it um ba -ba -ba -ba. yeah it's super hard to search a general non epileptic yeah, it was epileptic uh, experiment search um nine items yeah subject name and day no that would be no that's the study number that must be subject that must be day so yeah, one two three four six seven eight nine but it's a uh, long term so there's actually a lot of data and um, this doesn't, doesn't have a url so it's a problem it's a problem i don't know how, how this website works i think it's sort of designed quite some time ago error on the server that's not good yeah you can even view the data from here but i would not attempt it to think it will uh, it might not work is it safe to assume this that uh, is from eight uh, dogs yeah this table is impossible to to work with you have this uh, eight dogs that was 31 rats and normal 20 wife with cortical infarction yeah do i want to know how that model is actually being achieved uh, probably not probably not okay well, what else we've got physio net that's not good uh, we need to replace it let's find it in the html uh, epilepsy data sets this format this document so why it does it that way it's weird and the link doesn't work anymore that's the problem 
of some of these data sets, of some of these rep repositories, the data sets just might disappear. Just disappear. So I'm thinking on uh, server, shall we, considering they were in the public domain, with a Creative Commons a license, we should be able to keep a copy. Uh, let's go physionet eg just to data it doesn't say how many there are it's possible that there are only three yeah one of them is open access this one has quite a lot of tasks for safe actuation music perfume coffee for enhancing cognitive states include subjects responses reaction times and physiological data eda HR, PVP, PPG, temperature, accelerometer, EEG. How old is this one? Published last year. End of last year. So like a couple of months ago. It's uh, open access. It's interesting. But the one that we were looking for <laughs> just disappeared. Uh, that's not good. And I'm pretty sure it's been used quite extensively. Yeah, there's about uh, almost 3,000 publications they mention it. So it's not going anywhere. I'm sure there will be other repositories that uh, have it. It's really in, in uh, uh, How's it even possible uh, in Google Scholar? When you uh, sort by relevance, it gives you uh, 2,600 results. You sort by date, it gives you 144. And one of them is three days ago. But we don't want that. We want the older one. Yeah, it's not a very useful. What happened to the physio to the physionet link? It's freely available on physionet.org. Is the uh, link? There is. Yep. Good luck. I actually, think I might have a copy of it uh, locally somewhere. Should we start another repo? It's only 2.7 gigabyte. How did I manage to compress 2.7 into 500 megabyte? That's interesting. I assume those are subject IDs. The data is in CSV files. Let's just start. Start on Unix time. I love Unix time. The CDA sampling rate. <laughs> Why do it? <laughs> Okay, sampling rate could be just a variable you don't need it with every entry. Uh, sampling time you again could have just had the uh, delta t, essentially your sampling rate instead of uh, having the actual numbers that do not change. Why don't they change? It's a bit odd, isn't it? It's already for red flags. The EDA actually changes. That's good. Point eight, point nine, somewhere. It's quite variable. Starting off zero is a bit odd. It's probably the first sample can be ignored. Where's the EEG? EEG. Right, only four electrodes. Timestamps are actually changing. It's a good sign. It doesn't mean there is like inconsistent sampling rate. It doesn't mean there is a drift in the times between samples. Why this is just not a single variable. Then we have four electrodes. Hey, which might be not enough for most tasks. I don't know what stat is. Is that sound? Auditory. So it's response to sound. I have a problem with it. This could be some sort of artifact. Uh, if the, especially if the sound is, uh, yeah, there's also some problems with sound uh, being played that could be actually interfering. Uh, the EEG electrodes could be picking up sound, especially if coming through, uh, you know, earbuds that have a magnet uh, in them. But I don't know anything about it. So. Yeah, it would be interesting to have a look at it, uh, considering it was published recently. It's uh, open source, a Creative Commons license. So we could look 
look at that. Yeah, it's a shame that some some data sets just disappear from the public domain. That's not good. Uh, we'll see if we can find it somewhere else. Oh, I think we actually might have a copy of the data set ourselves. Because all these papers that mention it. Yeah, how many papers mention uh, this uh, link? 87. Yeah, and um, the data set is Gonski. Uh, that's not good. Yeah, might add a uh, regulation. I might uh, add this data set to the mix. Okay, we might continue with the HTML uh, format for now. Can you add the following data set into the table? Yeah, did you actually uh, look at the link? Brain variable monitoring experiment. Mm, what is it? Experiment A1. How do you know the quality? <laughs> How do you know the quality is high? Um, 2020? No, it's 2023. Where did you get 2020 from? Yeah, we need to add the... Um, if it's uh, EG. I don't think he actually looked the link. Go back and yeah, something. Uh, yeah, use this link instead. Yeah, that's more like it. Do I do scraping, like automated scraping? Uh, probably not allowed. Okay, we'll do it manually. Can we, like, semi... Uh, semi can we semi-automate the scraping of this website? Can you actually look at the website? Don't think you are. Why well, is conflict of interest? It might finish now. So yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check pinykills.com. Let me know what you think. Bye.